Hi everyone, back again with another video. Um, a few weeks ago I saw a for sale on eBay this phone here. It's in bits at the, at the moment but it's for a reason. Um, it's the KTAS D08. It looks, looking at it like that, you'd say it's a modern reproduction but this is not. Uh, this was probably made in the 30s or the start of the 40s. I think they were made with several, well I say several, some different varieties. Um, this one, the dial, is surmounted to the, the bar going across there. Anyway, I waited for this phone. It was reasonably priced and it was in, as you can see, it was in good condition. The handset was nice, there was no damage, no breakage. Uh, the phone itself was sound and I went ahead and got it. Anyhow, someone else more or less said to me, well, make sure it's not a reproduction and that got me worried a bit but I had seen that when this was advertised on eBay they showed the I'm looking at the wrong underside they showed the underside and as I say it's very very heavy and you see the typical underside there. It's a bit difficult to get it in the right position. There we are. That's the, that's the underside. You've got that metal plate which uh, screws on through four screws in the corner. You've also got on the plate uh, the make or the type. I don't know if that shows up. It might not show up but there is in fact um, the name on there. So that was okay. Now the underside, I should get back to the underside. Show the parts on the on the underside. Now these phones are rather unusual. Most have an anti-side tone coil which is just um, a length of coil. But this one is made into a toroid. Now I understand there's two sets, sets of windings on there held in underneath. The wire is braided so it's quite old and it's nice that the actual colour code is still there or the colour code, the colour of the wire. Now that big square box that you see, have another closer look, it's got terminals on the top so it's a capacitor, very large one. I don't know why they wanted wanted one quite that size, but anyhow, you had the space to put it in, and that's that's what they did. They obviously used that as a space. So that those the underneath I saw on the advert, and I thought, right, that looks pretty genuine to me. Now let's restore this back to its. Sh round the right way. Now getting back to the actual insides we can go over some of the points. You've got your terminals there. Um, there is a diagram for this on uh, rotary phone forums. It's unavailable at the moment. I don't know why but it, it, there is there is a diagram, a very nice diagram, all in colour, which tells you where to put the wires. I haven't decided whether at this stage they were more or less the same or there was variations. There's not, and at least I haven't found it, a date on here. Some of these phones had a date. I, I can't find one on this. I know my eyes are bad. And uh, once again, it gives me a chance to apologise for those that I haven't answered. 
uh, I, I'm having great difficulty in, in seeing and particularly typing. So I don't mind talking. I don't like typing. So let's have a look. We've got... As you put the cradle down or the handset down, that's the one that operates. Set contacts breaking and one making. That's all intact. You've got your your bell coils. And on the top there you've obviously got the hammer. At the back you've got a meter or register. And um, I assume that when these were originally made, um, a call would go through and each call would make the metre step. I don't honestly know if that is the case, but I th think it is. They've got a metre, so it gives you an idea how many calls you made. Coming round to the front, you've got the dial. Now, huh, this is where the saw point arised, arise. I had this dial off of another KTA, KTAS phone. It's a genuine dial and it would have been at some time fitted to this phone. I might say the a lot of the American ones had uh, the American uh, designation sort of stuck to the on the card on on here, but this one they can't do that because I've showed this dial before. You just press in. Very unusual, and also it's got unusual lettering. So if you see that one H I K, you know it's off a phone from this country. Well, are you from Copenhagen? Now, I mentioned the dial because I'd waited for this phone to arrive. It went through the, I don't know what they call it, it's a blooming nuisance. It goes all around the world. The tracking seems to work in America. In England, it, it does anything but work, work. But anyway, I finally got the phone and beautifully packed it really was beautifully packed I took the box from the gentleman and I thought ah it's arrived well that night I was actually well, it was yesterday I was due to go to my local cactus meeting so I didn't really have much time so I I thought well I'll have a quick look inside and see if it's come through without any damage. Well, it took quite a job to unpack it because it was well packed. Now then, as I unpacked the actual phone that was, all, it was in separate packing, I noticed the original dial. This is the dial that was on this phone. Once again, notice it's, it's Hick, it's Hick, EFG, it's the same, it's just a modernised version of that dial. But to my horror, it had been damaged. And I thought, oh God, it's got damaged in transit. But it hasn't. It was, it was like that before it was packed. There's the other side of the dial. This was based on the British um, slipping cam type dial. And for some unknown reason, it's completely locked up. The finger stop had been bashed down. The outer disc, if you, if you like, put that down there. This part here had sort of been pressed down. I was very upset about that because I was hoping I'd going to pick the phone up give this little uh, YouTube on it by opening up and looking at the various bits and having a little talk which I love doing but I've had to add this little part to it where the dial 
was broken and that dial was broken before the phone was even sent. Now it annoys me because you often see stuff on uh, the eBay which will be stated for spares or repairs. Alright, if it says that you expect something might be wrong and you're already prepared for it. But when nothing is said, you assume that the phone is working or at least in quite good state. And as I say, I looked at this one and there was nothing about them. And from the pictures, you couldn't make out the doll because when you look at the doll straight on, it didn't tell me that it wasn't rotating. But that was the story. But fortunately, I had another doll which came out of the other phone. So obviously, I'm still waiting for a replacement doll to put back on the other phone. I'm hoping it might be sent to me. I, I, I don't know. Um, I have asked the sender to, well, I said to him, why did you send a phone knowing that it's not working? My belief is that he was asked someone, it wasn't the normal stuff he sold. I won't give his name. Um, it wasn't the normal stuff that he sells. Uh, the stuff that he sells was anything but phones so I'm just thinking that perhaps he knows someone who said to them oh I've got a phone can you put it out on eBay I don't know I'm just surmising that so you know that is so we wait with interest to see if that person gets back to me uh, I have suggested that they should at least give me the money to buy or get a replacement dial and as I stated it's got to be the correct one with HIK on it. So as I say we do we wait and hope. Anyhow on a brighter theme I wired it up and connected it up and um, alright the bell didn't work but there was only a strap on these um, terminals there's a little strap in there and that was just made across there and the bells functions the transmission appears to be good all in all it's a good phone and very well made just look at the the cores and the way they're adjusted I hadn't got to touch a thing they were all okay. They're strong, to, uh, strong contacts. The only one thing which I didn't know what was, and if someone out there does know, please tell me. There's a, I don't know whether that's a coil or what that is. The other end, if we can see it, has two terminals. I could tap it out to see where it goes to, but. I was just curious, it, um, it's not connected to the counter because the counter's got a coil inside which, which steps it round. But it's, um, I just wondered what it was, so if anyone does know, I'd be very grateful. Anyhow, I'm going to uh, say I haven't put it together, I will be now, but that is what it looks like. And I say it's in f fairly good nick. And, um, you know, I was pleased to get it. I'm still pleased I've got it. But I was a little bit annoyed about the dial, which, you know, it shouldn't have been sent with a dodgy dial, or at least they should have said before it's for spares or the dial's faulty. Between you and me and the gatepost, I would have probably have still got it, but it would have had to have reflected on what price I paid. Anyhow, I'm going to finish up talking because you'll all be going to sleep but I haven't noticed is that nice handset and all these phones going back even further than these have the similar type of handset some were black um, but that's 
basically the same thing. And as I said, I've found out it's called a DO8. And further information will be found if you have a look at the uh, Rotary Phone Forums. I think it's Classics Rotary Fo Phones Forum. And there is a diagram for it, but unfortunately at the moment I can't bring it up. I don't know why it's unavailable, but I think it will come back. So there we are. That's me done for the day. Um, those things at the back are the little feet that screw on to the base. And oh yeah, the colour codes that well the, the colour codes that this one uses only there's only two of these are used and it's the I think it's the brown I'll have to look at it out yeah it's a brown wire and a green wire so it's the brown and green ignore the white that's obviously not used um, it might have been used for oh it's coming up now it might have been used when on a version that um, would have had that button there's a little space there for a button where they blanked out on this one and as you can see there's nothing there that would operate to the button. Also before I go I'm surmising this turn it round I know there's a label on there which I'm going to try and gently take off it's a paper label the other label on there was one put on years ago it gives the emergency number for America but on here is a little cutaway now my assumption of this may have been for an additional receiver I think in the early days it, it was possible that you could have ordered one or had an additional earpiece which would connect into where the handset goes here on the terminal I think is that end and um, they would have had a little grommet or something in there I may be totally wrong but that's what I think it was for was for an external uh, receiver or a watch receiver some, pe some people call them so there we are I've said my pieces um, any comments please make please subscribe and once again, I am sorry for not answering uh, some of the uh, queries. Uh, but by the way, talking about uh, uh, cataracts and that, I've got an interview on Monday where I have to see the hospital and I'm going to have to um, explain that I can hardly see, which I can hardly see. So I'm hoping this is all in focus. I think it is. Anyhow, once again, I'm going on. I love talking. Talk too much. Once again, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll catch you again soon. Thank you.